A student asked me another day, what's the worst thing that could happen to honeybees? If I have to pick one thing, this is my choice. Welcome to InsideTheHive.tv, the show that takes you into the world of bees. I'm your host, Umberto Boncristiani. And before we talk about the worst thing that could happen to honeybees, let's first talk about the terrible things that are already happening right now. The European honeybee Apis mellifera, yes, this one, the same one that gives you honey, and more importantly, one third of the food that you eat throughout pollination, are not in good shape right now. As you probably heard from the news, they're facing many different problems. Colony collapse disorder, viruses, bad nutrition, pesticides, a macrosporidium called Nosema serrani, and so on and on. From all of those problems, without a doubt, a mite called Varroa destructor is the main contributor for the famous honeybee decline that you probably know from the news. Varroa destructor is considered the biggest problem in beekeeping worldwide today. And since its introduction in 87 in the United States, several thousands of hives have died because of that. If you are new to bees or beekeeping, imagine yourself trying to work every day having an animal the size of a small dog attached to your neck, sucking your blood 24-7. Or even worse, imagine two, three, four of them at the same time. But what makes them so dangerous is not only that but especially because they are vectored of deadly viruses. If varroa is not treated, for sure it's gonna kill a hive in about a year. They're globally spread, with only a few regions in the world claiming to be varroa free. So to answer my student question, what is the worst thing that could happen to honeybees today? What could be worse than a blood sucker that transmits viruses on top of so many other terrible things that are already happening? How about Another blood sucker, but this one on steroids. Yes, that's right. What if I tell you that in Asia, the region in the world with the biggest concentrations of hive, varroa destructor is not the main concern. Not because varroa is less dangerous there or the bees are different. The fact is, they have another blood sucker, much worse than varroa to be worried about. Its name, Tropilaps. Please remember this name, Tropilaps. And the global spread of this little devil, in my opinion, would be the worst thing that could happen to honeybees today. The biology of Tropilaps is very similar to Varroa, and I will not get into the details here. They're not new, they're endemic from South Asia, and beekeepers are dealing with them for hundreds of years. What makes them so dangerous is the fact that they reproduce faster than Varroa. In average, they have the double amount of offspring from a single adult female. So they can cause damage much faster and even overcome varroa population in a co-infection. To identify them from varroa is easy. The rule of thumb will be that varroa is wider than is long and moves very slowly. On the other hand, tropilae labs is longer than wide and moves pretty fast. But you might be asking yourself, if they're so powerful, why they're not the biggest problem on beekeeping today? The reason why scientists believe they didn't dominate the world yet is pretty simple. As far as we know, tropilaps do not feed on adult bees like varroa, meaning that they need a constant supply of bee brood to feed on to survive. Experiments have shown that they can only survive for around 72 hours without brood. Meaning that in any event where there is a break on the brood cycle, tropilaps will die. In an event like swarming, when the, when the hive splits to form a new one, a break on the brood cycle happens because the new cluster of bees, only adult bees, need some time to find a home, food, build a new comb, before the new queen to be able to lay eggs again and produce new brood. An event that takes more than 72 hours. Consequently, tropilaps will die. Another event that forces bees to get break in a brood cycle is cold weathers. Honeybee behaves differently in strong winters. They evolve to live longer than normal, they keep themselves clustered to keep themselves warm. Also, the queen stops to lay eggs to save resources, which cause the break in the brood cycle. Remember, no brood means no food, that means death to tropilaps. Now let's talk about the problem. 
and probably why I'm doing this video and started this whole channel. Let's take a look where Tropilla Labs are founded today. Afghanistan, India, Indonesia, Kenya, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Nepal, Pakistan, Philippines, Papua New Guinea, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Vietnam, China, South Korea. Can you see the problem here? Recently, Tropilla Labs were found in cold areas in China and South Korea, meaning that Tropilla Labs is showing some sign of adaptation and perhaps overcoming its inability to feed on adult bees or some other kind of cold tolerance. We don't know for sure what's going on, but the fact is they are moving and we can't ignore that. The best way to avoid problem is to be prepared for the arrival in case it happens around you. So please help me to share this video with fellow beekeepers around the world so they can easily identify them and report to local authorities. For more information about this mite, please visit the video description below where I will share some links to articles about this pest. If you want to know more about everything related to bees and science, InsideTheHive.tv is your new place to go. I'm very excited with my new personal project and impressed with the amount of people from all over the world that already accepted to collaborate. There are so many videos in the oven right now being prepared with great content about bees, pollination, nature, biology, science, and much more. The whole idea here is to create a community to learn about biology of bees and have fun. If you like this video, hit the like button below and please consider to subscribe. Well, I think this is goodbye for now and I hope you enjoyed and see you, see you in the next video. Bye.